So I got my selenium test results back. I've got a little bit of an update on my high fat carnivore diet. And I want to talk about the nutrition that is available in pork fat. Hi there, my name is Sue, and if you've not visited my channel before, I've been on the carnivore diet now for a little bit over 21 months, and I have just started on a high-fat carnivore diet, so eating 80% of my calories from fat and 20% from protein, um, just not quite two weeks ago. All right, so let me tell you why I am doing that if you've not been to my channel before and haven't watched my recent videos. Um, I have got a bit of a sluggish thyroid, so my hubby and I both had our thyroid levels checked just recently, and we both have um, sluggish thyroids. Uh, my T4 and my T3 was a little bit low, his T3 was a little bit low, and so we're trying to correct that. Um, hubby was having a lot of hair falling and feels the cold more than he used to, so I kind of suspected that um, he had a thyroid issue, and um, the tests confirmed that for both of us. So that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this. The other reason is that I had uh, fasting insulin done just recently as well, and realized, as I kind of suspected, that my insulin is still way too high. So um, I really want to get rid of more weight. My weight loss has been at a standstill for ages. I've lost a little bit of weight since being on carnivore, but not a whole lot. I've, my body composition has changed, and um, I've gone down probably a couple of sizes in my clothing. But um, I haven't really dropped anything for ages. And in fact, I've actually put a little bit of weight back on just recently. So um, I suspected that my insulin wasn't, was probably still too high and it absolutely is and so I'm hoping that by doing a high fat uh, more keto style carnivore diet that um, I can um, get that insulin down a bit quicker than it might otherwise go. I, I kind of I'm hoping that it has improved and on the time that I've been on carnivore I don't know because I didn't get an insulin test done prior um, but I'm figuring that it probably has improved uh, but still is way too high. So since I started on this high fat um, carnival diet, I have been having a little bit of trouble with my belly, um, loose bowels and things like that. So if you've uh, not watched my earlier videos, my digestive system was a big part of my reason for starting on the carnival diet in the first place, because uh, I had years and years of IBS diarrhea. And when I went on to carnivore, the diarrhea actually got worse and was worse for quite a period of time, like months. Um, I've managed to resolve the diarrhea just in the last six months or so by focusing on SIBO. And so I would had no diarrhea for five months prior to starting the high-fat carnivore diet. But my digestive system has been struggling. And it seems to be getting a bit better. Um, the first few days, I had one day where I was just not feeling good all day. And then the other days, my belly's a bit upset in the morning. It usually settles by lunchtime. Um, but I kind of, I suspected that my gallbladder was probably the problem. And kind of had that confirmed in the last couple of days because I noticed uh, this may be too much information for some people. If, if you don't like talking about poo, close your, close your ears. Um, but I had noticed that when I flushed the toilet, um, the, it was like the toilet wasn't flushing properly, and then yesterday when I actually had a proper look, turned the, turned the light on and had a proper look at it, there was actually fat uh, globules floating on the top of the water. So that means that my um, gallbladder obviously isn't producing enough bile to break that down. So I'm figuring it's probably just a matter of time for my body to kind of get used to that. But what I'm actually doing uh, is I'm going to start, I'm starting to use castor oil packs over my liver. So... I last night used a uh, castor oil pack for the first time and um, I, I just left it on for about 40 minutes because I wasn't quite sure how my body would respond to it. I had a little bit of pain in my liver when I was had it on there which I thought was kind of interesting and a bit of a grumbly belly afterwards but apart from that there was no issues. So I'll do that again probably tonight and tomorrow night and then um, I'll probably do it for the, at least the next two or three weeks, maybe a couple of times a week, three times a week. I don't know. I'll wait and see how it goes. 
Um, but the castor oil is really good for breaking down um, stones and things in your body. And so if there's any stones or any um, sludge in my gallbladder, hopefully that'll help to um, get rid of that. And I have also today started taking milk thistle again for my liver because I was taking that before. Um, I've taken it a couple of times since I've been on carnivore just to help support my liver and I think my liver going on to this high fat carnivore diet um, could probably do with the support again so I'm starting to take that again. So um, what else? So the selenium test, the reason we had the selenium test done was because um, we want to take iodine for our thyroids and the thyroid requires iodine and selenium to make thyroid hormone and so I, I actually thought that we would both be deficient maybe in selenium I wondered whether we were and I actually thought about just getting a selenium supplement and taking it but then I thought no I really want to get this tested because I want to make sure because if you take too much selenium it can be dangerous and so I'm glad we got tested because both of our selenium levels are probably perfect uh, we both came in exactly the same 1.32 and the range is 0.45 to 1.40 so we're both um, up on the higher range higher end of that range for selenium which is great and so we've both already been taking some iodine just for the last week just two drops um, each a day of a two percent legal solution and so now that i know that our selenium's okay we'll probably increase that amount um, i'm a little bit weary with iodine because i took it uh, for about 18 months around 2010-2011 and I ended up with uh, an overactive thyroid and I'm not sure why that happened. I thought at the time that it was uh, because of the iodine and I, I thought that maybe it was autoimmune thyroid disease. I don't know. I never had that confirmed because I never went to an endocrinologist. I decided that I was going to sort my thyroid out myself and I managed to um, to put that... Um, Graves disease into remission and I've never really had issues with it again but I kind of wondered whether I had still had autoimmune thyroid disease as in Hashimoto's potentially um, and I wasn't sure um, but looking into it more now I kind of wonder whether the reason that that I ended up with the overactive thyroid was partly because it had a really stressful year two years prior to that happening uh, which I'm going to do a video about one day um, but I haven't done that yet and the other thing was that um, I just I came across a document online uh, with some information from Dr Brownstein who wrote the book iodine you can't live without it or something this is the that's the book that got me started taking iodine originally now he actually uses iodine to resolve autoimmune thyroid disease and he said that iodine does not cause it and doesn't cause any problems. He said, um, but in this document it says if iodine is causing problems, it's due to detoxification pathways not working properly. And so when I saw that, I thought, oh, that actually kind of makes sense because um, for a start, I think that I probably had a lot of nutritional deficiencies uh, back then because I mean I had IBS diarrhea and I was eating a mostly vegan vegetarian diet a lot of the time I ate a bit of meat at that stage off and on but I didn't eat any butter I didn't eat any dairy I didn't eat any animal fats um, and so I think that there was probably deficiencies because of that um, and I was also drinking way too much um, alcohol wine wine basically and had been for a lot of years so I think I probably had fatty liver I probably still have fatty liver um, I never never had that any tests for that so I don't know but I kind of suspect that that's what was going on and so in the years in between whenever I've tried to take iodine I've always um, if I take it every day I'd end up with hypothyroid symptoms coming back so you know gaining weight and feeling cold and swelling feet and a bit of depression and so I was never quite sure why that was happening but um, again probably detoxification pathways because my body just wasn't functioning properly so the other thing that um, kind of goes hand in hand with hypothyroidism is low vitamin D levels and back then when I had my vitamin D tested it was it was uh, on the low side and then I had my vitamin D tested again a few years later and it was uh, definitely very low then 
and both of those lots of tests I was actually living in Queensland um, when I had the first lot of tests done I was on the beach every day usually twice a day walking running riding my push bike I was outside all the time in the sunshine and so my body obviously wasn't converting vitamin D and then I didn't have really any in my diet probably very very little so I think that was part of my problem as well so um, last year just before Christmas so about three months ago I had my vitamin D levels checked uh, I did a video about that if you want to go back and check that out and my vitamin D levels were within the in the range uh, they were higher than they were both times uh, recently that I had them done in Queensland and that was after two years with basically very little summer here in New Zealand and not taking any vitamin D supplements or anything so it's my obviously my diet my carnivore diet has, is increasing my vitamin D levels and so that's great and so trying now that I've had the the hypothyroid thing confirmed I'm kind of really wanting to focus on that um, to get that corrected and help get some weight loss weight off hence the high fat carnivore diet and wanting to take iodine so um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that right now um, with uh, regards to hubby I mean one of the things that he had going on was not sleeping well and this is something that happened last time we lived in New Zealand with him as well he would wake up three or four o'clock in the morning just about every day and that's been happening again for about the last three years and I don't know why it happens here and didn't happen in Australia it may be something different in the nutrition here or I'm not really sure but um, what we're, we're doing is because I'm trying to correct his thyroid as well I've been encouraging him to eat more fat which is it's a bit difficult to get him to change his diet sometimes um, but I've managed to get him to eat more fat and he's actually sleeping better like he'd been gradually um, increasing his sleep and having you know a day every few days where he'd sleep right through to you know six or seven o'clock and then in the last four nights uh, we've actually I bought an earthing mat for the bed and we've had the earthing mat now for four nights and every night he has slept through the first the first morning he woke up at um, seven seven o'clock the next morning he woke up at quarter to eight and then he's had a couple of mornings about six six thirty so that is really good uh, so I think between the fat and the earthing mat is making a massive difference for him um, I'll link to I got the earthing mat if you're in New Zealand I got it from um, Granite Kiwi and um, I'll link to a similar mat uh, the same sort on Amazon because I've seen them on Amazon as well because I actually thought about getting one from Amazon because they're a bit cheaper but um, they they have American plugs and stuff so I just thought oh, I'll just get it from Granite Kiwi and so I did that the only the only thing with them is that they kind of feel a bit plasticky under your sheet because of the material that they're made out of uh, it doesn't really worry me but I, some people have commented on that on the reviews um, but they obviously work pretty well and so yeah he's sleeping really well my sleep's been a little bit kind of all over the place since I've had the grounding mat and I've been waking a few times but I think my body's just kind of getting used to it I've been dreaming a little bit more and I think that's been part of it as well and that's fairly common apparently for the first couple of weeks so time will tell with that we will see so anyway let's get back to the pork fats I didn't used to really eat very much pork you know I, I never ate pork as a child I don't remember ever eating I don't think we ever had it in our house um, my dad's vegetarian and he was kind of he became vegetarian when I was fairly young and so um, I don't think dad liked pork at all and so we just didn't eat it and um, the first time that I actually remember eating pork was uh, when I was probably 18 or 19 and my friend used to cook it quite a bit and um, I started eating it then with apple sauce <laughs> and so I'd, I, I would cook it then uh, just roast pork mostly um, and then I had a lot of years where I didn't eat it at all I just always I think because of the influence of dad growing up around meat and my whole beliefs about you know meat being bad and plants being good kind of thing um, I believed all the bad things about pork and so I had little stages like when I started eating meat again I would eat it occasionally 
uh, usually just a roast, we'd get a roast pork occasionally. And for a while in Australia, before we moved back to New Zealand, I remember hubby and I were buying loin, pork loin chops quite a bit um, for a patch there. But that's really all, you know. And But I just still always had this thing about pork being just no good meat and that it was probably, you know, going to have more parasites and all that sort of stuff. Um, which, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That was just beliefs that I had around pork. And so... I didn't really used to eat it very much at all, very, very rare. Um, but now that's that's changing right now. Um, now, I mentioned in my video the other day, I've been listening to Stephanie Keto Person, and she's a big advocate for pork belly, pastured pork belly uh, in particular. And was talking, she, she seems to eat it most days, I think, and she was talking about how, you know, the pork fat and how good it is for us and that we should definitely not be scared of eating pork fat. And so I'd kind of started looking into that a little bit and then I was watching a video with Dr. Berry in it and he said something about pork fat being really high in vitamin D, in particular pastured pork fat. And that pricked my ears up because I'm trying to get my vitamin D levels up nice and high and I keep forgetting to take my vitamin D supplement and I'd rather not take the supplement if I can get it through food. So I went looking at information on pork fat. Now, it's really interesting. It's a bit of a nutritional powerhouse. I went so much so that I went to the farmer's market today and I bought some more lard. I bought two of these. And this is from a man who grows his piggies outside. They're all free range. He's a butcher. He does them himself. Unfortunately, he's trying to retire, he said, which really sucks because I really wanted to be able to buy, keep buying pork from him. So um, pastured pigs are fairly, seem to be fairly rare here in New Zealand. I've got a feeling that some of the councils, I'm not sure whether this is the case in New Zealand, but I've got a feeling some of the councils give farmers that want to free range pigs maybe a bit of a hard time and don't want them doing it. Um, I know that was the case in Australia and Queensland. Um, because I was working on the council in Hubby Bay and it wasn't in our council but it was the, the Gympie council. There were some people wanting to free range pigs on their rural property there and the council would not let them, which is just so wrong. We need more pastured piggies all over the place. So this, I went and bought this. I had this pork lard in the fridge which I had bought ages ago. This is a product that I've just seen in the supermarkets here in New Zealand probably the last 12, 18 months, and it's uh, Freedom Farms, so Freedom, or well, Freedom Farmed Pork. So Freedom Farmed Pork is in the supermarkets, but it's not free range, from what I understand. They just are a bit more humane about the way they keep their pigs. Um, and the difference between this pork lard and this pork lard is quite profound when you actually taste them. So this one has more taste and it just tastes so much better. Um, but I did make some pork mayo with this the other day because I am, um, when I started to realise how much nutrition was in pork, I thought I'm going to make a mayo with that and um, it's actually pretty good. So I just basically used the same recipe that I, I put a video up a few days ago, last week I think, of how I make how I make butter mayo and it's basically the same recipe but just use the pork lard instead. You could even use a mixture of pork lard and butter if you don't like the pork lard taste. So um, let's talk about the nutrition that's in pork lard. Um, so the Western A Price Foundation did um, some testing on free range um, pork fat and they found that it contains upwards of 10,000 IU of vitamin D per tablespoon. That's massive, absolutely massive. So it's not surprising that when people used to eat pork, lots of pork lard, uh, that people were more healthy. Um, when you look at different areas in Asia, they eat a lot of pork and um, pork fat, and they tend to be um, a lot leaner than us and generally healthier. So especially in the areas that eat lots and lots of pork. So um, yeah, a really, really good amount of vitamin D in that pork. So it's going to be in my diet lots from here on in. Um, now I've got some tables here that I'm going to pop up to show you the rest of the nutrition that's in this pork fat. Because, you know, I've been looking into, prior I've been looking into the nutrition in pork meat um, because hubby and I both 
uh, discovered or had confirmed that we had MTHFR gene mutations which affect um, the creation of methylfolate in your body and so I was trying to understand what nutrients we need to get in to make sure that that's happening etc etc and realised that pork was actually a lot higher in a lot of B vitamins than beef and um, lamb or ruminant meats so I, th I thought hmm, that's interesting and then looking at the pork fat wait till you see what's in this so, so when you have a look at this first table which is uh, the vitamins in pork you'll see that there are a lot of B, B, B vitamins in the pork fat you know you think of fat as just being fat you know not not um, not having huge amounts of nutrition in it but it actually does but, but because this has kind of blown me away so you know, you've got 11% of your daily requirement of vitamin B6, and it says here 12% of vitamin D. But this, these, these tables are probably based on commercially raised pigs. So when you take into account, if you know, if you're eating pasture-raised pork, then these amounts are going to be a whole lot higher, especially the vitamin D, because the pigs are out in the sun. So in this pork fat. Um, you've got 13% of your daily requirement for for vitamin B, <laughs> tongue tied, for vitamin B1, which is thiamine, and B1 is a really common deficiency. Um, you've got 16% of your vitamin B3 and 28% of the vitamin B12 that's required on a daily basis, which is pretty huge. Now in this in this table here you can see the minerals in pork you've got nine percent of the daily requirement of potassium which is fairly impressive because potassium um, of the uh, of the um, all the electrolytes is required in the highest amount so so we we require about um, 4700 milligrams of potassium a day and a serving of pork fat contains nine percent of that which is pretty cool pretty huge and also because i hadn't had my selenium test results when i saw the selenium the amount of selenium and you know a serving of pork fat i was like well 16 percent of the daily requirement of selenium that's fairly impressive and now in this table you can see all the amino acids that are in the pork and um, the fatty acids so the makeup of pork fat is different than I thought it was and so pork fat is made up of uh, about 40% saturated fat, 50% monounsaturated fat and only 10% polyunsaturated fat and so those omega-6s are in much lower amounts than I thought they were because it's the omega-6s that can cause inflammation and so that was one of the reasons that I avoided pork as well was because I thought that it was you know going to be more inflammatory because it contained too much omega-6 but it actually doesn't it's, it's mostly monounsaturated fat and you can see on here that you've got 39% um, of your daily requirement for omega-3 and 11% uh, of your daily requirement of DHA and 51% of your requirement of ALA so it has a an interesting um, fatty acid kind of profile so the the nutrition in the in this pork fat is really impressive and so for me I'm going to be making sure that pork and pork fat um, are a staple part of my diet going forward and um, without any more cons kind of concerns about it um, the way that I'm going to do that is probably just mostly consume pork belly and making mayo with with lard and cooking in pork lard more than what I have been and so yeah so that's that's my plan moving forward and getting the benefits from all that nutrition in this amazing pork lard so if you have any comments or questions just pop them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can I'd be really interested to know how many of you um, eat pork whether you use lard whether you knew about the nutrition that's in lard, whether you, you eat pastured pork. Um, if you're in New Zealand and you're eating free-range pork, where do you buy it from? There seems to be a bit of a deficiency in free-range pork suppliers here in New Zealand. There's a couple online, but not very many. Um, if, you're, if you've got land and you're wanting to farm something, farm, farm pork. I think there's probably way more demand for the pork than there are suppliers for free-range and if people get wind of the nutrition that's in this pork bar, that's, that's going to grow even more. So yeah, that, that's um, my video for today. Um, if you like this content, make sure to subscribe and please like and share. Uh, that really helps to support my channel. Um, and I thank you very much for watching and listening to me today. And I will talk to you again another day. Bye for now.